excited to be here today. It is an honor to be amongst such greatness that has been on the screen and it's just, I, I'm pretty much floored by everything I've heard so far today and I'm excited to be bringing a new message or really a, a constant message I guess, but in my own fashion to be bringing that to you all tonight. You know, as I was driving in the car, I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought about this whole Change the World Summit. And I thought about the idea of us changing the world and how big of a responsibility that is. It's, it's enormous. And I, and I realized that before we can go out and change the world, we need to change our home first. And it brought me back to a conversation I had with my daughter. And um, I kind of had to do a little mindset mastery with her today. And after giving her the mindset mastery deal, I had to kind of do it for myself and kind of talk myself because a lot went on this morning. And it just made me realize how much more important the message of mindset mastery is because every single day we're out here, every single day we're moving forward and we have to continue to move forward. And the only way to do that is to make sure that we have our minds set in the right place. So with that, I'm going to share a little bit of a message with you that I compiled, put together um, specifically for today, because I know that there are many people out here who I speak to on a regular basis and we've talked about various things. So I've added some of that into this presentation that I have for you. And I just wanted to go ahead and share that with you. Now, I'm not sure, but my presentation is not moving. So let's see what's um, going on here. One moment. Now, the, my daughter, haha, <laughs> she's a funny one. She says, Mommy, so are you going to be um, doing a speech today? I said, well, it's going to be a speech, but it's going to be a little bit of a presentation. And she said, well, make sure that you know that you, you slow down because I speak fast. <laughs> and she says, I'm going to coach you a little bit since you coach everybody else. So we had a little coaching session. And like I said, we dealt with her mindset and I dealt with my mindset. And, we <clears throat> and then we move forward. What is mindset? Well, mindset is a way of thinking. It's an attitude. And it's, it's just kind of your everyday things that you've been taught, things that you just the way that you kind of go about life, the way that you think about things that happen in your life is your mindset. What is mastery? Let's define that. Thank you. And Miriam Webster defines mastery as something that you, you perfect. And I honestly can't even see um, the screen. So I'm just going <laughs> to go with my own definition of mastery. <laughs> but mastery is something that you master, something that you're able to do well. <coughs> Excuse me. So can you, with, with, knowing, with knowing what mindset is and understanding what the term mastery means, can you actually master your mind? And I would say the answer to that would be yes. Yes, you can. If you master your mindset, you can surely transform your life. And that really is what mastery mindset is or, or mastering of the mind is about. Being able to master your thoughts and master your your thought processes so that you're able to move through life and do the things that you need to do so that your life is transformed and set up in such a way that you're able to succeed and, and do some of the things that you have set up for yourself in life. Your mind is your most treasured asset. It's your partner for a lifetime and it will carry you far, but only if you use it, excuse me, use it properly. Now, your mind can plague you or it can propel you, the mindset that you have. You can allow the mindset to hinder you or you can allow it to heal you. That is your choice. There is a such thing that I've been reading recently and I had not actually heard of it until recently. There's such thing as a fixed mindset and then there's a growth mindset. People who have a fixed mindset have the mentality of, oh, maybe not a woe is me mentality, but this is the life I've been given, this is the plot that I have in place and this is how I'm going to have to move forward because this is the plate I've been dealt or the, the hand I've been dealt. A person with a growth mindset, on the other hand, doesn't just take things as they come. They know that life is going to happen, 
but they move forward with action and they don't allow things, no matter what it is, to hold them back and to hinder them. What they do is they continue to grow and continue to learn and continue not only to learn, but to teach what they've learned because they know in teaching what they've learned, they're enforcing the, the mindset and allowing those things to be embedded even further. So a person with a growth mindset tends to continue to move through life and takes action in a different way than a person with a fixed mindset does. Now, there are three things that I would say kind of mess with your mind and, and, and keep you from moving forward in life. That first one I would say is fear, and many of us know about fear. There's stress, and then there are unforeseen circumstances. I found this picture online, I decided to post it here, and it says, I must not fear. <coughs> Excuse me, fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little, forgive me, because I, I can't even see because the light's in the way. But fear is the little death. Basically, fear obliterates pretty much anything in life that you have going on. It, you stop, it stops you from living your dreams. It stops you from doing things that you might otherwise do had the fear not kind of put itself in place. And, and, and I've heard it said that the only time you should fear is if you were being chased by a bear. Fear is, is in kind of, I guess, false evidence appearing real, as a lot of people say. Um, and in essence, that is what it is. It's, it is a mindset as well, but it's not a healthy mindset to have. And it's something that you should try with every fiber of your being to eliminate from your life and from your thought processes. Turn off the fear. You see the faucet there with the fear um, on the front? It, that's so that you can turn it off. You have the ability to turn fear off. Things are going to come to you. There are going to be times when you feel like you just can't go further or you just, you know, something is holding you back. But you have the power within your mind to stop that. You are strong enough. You're bigger than that fear. And you can allow yourself the freedom to move forward without letting fear kind of stand in your way. Now, I recently um, decided to launch my very first conference. And I wrote a quote. And fear probably held me back for some time. It, I was fearful that I wouldn't be able to do it. I was fearful that maybe the right people wouldn't come along. I was fearful that maybe enough people wouldn't sign up. And I realized that, you know what? If I allow those things to stop me, I'll never put this on because that can happen anytime to anyone. So I decided to, to put forth the mindset that I would not allow fear to fool me into dumbing down my greatness, into dumbing down the ideas that I have inside of me, into dumbing down a lot of the things that I've been wanting to do for many years. Instead, I would allow it to fuel me into the world and into my greatness and walk into the world with boldness because that is the only way to get anything accomplished. That is the mindset that you have to have. Fear cannot take over. Again, it will creep up. It will come. But it, you can't allow it to take you over. You can't allow it to overtake the ideas, the, the, the daily routine that you have going on, it, because it will kill you. It will obliterate anything that you have in the works, anything that you have in the future, and even the things that you have going on now. Fear will creep up at any time, and you have to take control of that. Stress is another one of the things that we unfortunately have to deal with on a regular basis. Stress comes in many forms. Sometimes we live life and we're running about and we assume that we're not stressed out when in fact our body is stressed out and we don't even know it. And there's a, f a quote that I found by Lee Iacocca and it says, in times of great stress or adversity, it's always best to keep busy, to plow your anger and your energy into something positive. And I believe that wholeheartedly because like I said, every day it can be stressful, just in, you know, as a mom, having to get up, having to get children to school, dealing with a business, dealing with a family, a household, a husband. That in and of itself, although we don't look at it as stress, they are stressors and they can cause us to have some, you know, to, to, to fall back a little bit, I guess you can say. So we have to know that although these things are going to come, we have to continue to move forward set our minds up that we are strong enough to get through whatever it is that's going on because we were built not to break. And I, I can't think of where I got that from, but I know it's someone's book who's, I think she's an HLIC, I'm not quite sure. But she, we're not built to break. And we can 
withstand, it's not going to be given to us if we can't take it. You know, so we, are, we have to keep the mindset that we're strong enough to withstand anything that comes our way. And that if we're, we were meant to build a family, then that's what we were meant to do. And we are built to kind of keep that, that unit together. And so we can't allow the stress of that and the, the outside forces that sometimes try to come in to, to push that to the side to take over. And of course, the unforeseen circumstances that occur. Um, some of them happen to be a lot worse than others, as is the situation with Tony Dungy. And, and we all know, if you know who Tony Dungy is, um, he lost a son to suicide. And this quote comes from him. Everything's not going to be perfect. You're going to have some losses that you're going to have to bounce back from, and some things that are a little unforeseen that you're going to have to deal with. That is going to happen every day. Those things cause stress. Those things sometimes cause us to have fear. But those things happen. Some of the unforeseen circumstances, like some of the things that happened today with me, are not that drastic. And it is easy to just pull yourself together and move forward. Some of them are not as easy. But at some point, you have to pull yourself up and continue to move forward. And, and our mindset plays a huge part in that. Conditioning our mind over the years, keeping ourselves healthy, you know, just doing those things that will keep our mindsets healthy. Reading positive books, listening to positive music. Those things over time, just built up, if you continue them as a habit, will keep your mind in a place that when these things do come and they do hit and they do strike, which they will and we know they will, maybe not a suicide, but even just the death of it. It could be a child, it could be a mother, it could be the death of a spouse. Those things happen. And so we have to move forward. So we have to maintain our mindsets and make sure that we keep a strength that's going to allow us to move in the direction that we continue, that we want, want to move, the future that we see for ourselves. Now, there are just a few suggestions that I've put together. This is not uh, extensive. And um, I just wanted to give you a few tidbits. This is, I know a lot of times when we think of mindset mastery, we think of affirmations, and we think of all these technical things. And, and I'm sure that when you saw that big mindset mastery, like Shay joked, I mean, uh, Trevor joked about, you know, with the clock, it sounds so profound. But there are some very simple things that we can do in life that will allow us to maintain a mindset and build our mindset so that we continue, like I said, to move forward in life and, and move forward with the strength that maybe you didn't know you had. And um, like I said, a few suggestions. One of them is to make wise choices based on what you envision for your future, not what you see in the rearview mirror. So often, we are basing what we do in life and how we think things are going to turn out turn out, excuse me, on what we know happened in the past. We continue to look in the rearview mirror. You know, it's like when you're driving. When you're driving a car, you can't keep looking back. You look back enough, somebody's going to hit you in the bumper, in your bumper. You have to look forward you, because you, there's a direction that you're going in. If you're continuing to look back, how are you going to know where you're headed? How are you going to get there? You, you, you can't see the road. So you have to not look in the rearview mirror. You have to envision the future, just like you know the destination. If you're, like I was coming here today, I got in my car, turned the GPS on, and I knew that I was coming to the CEO Collab spot. Um, and I may have missaid that, but <laughs> I just made up another word. But anyway, I, I had a destination that I was trying to reach, and I knew the destination. So I looked forward, I looked into my windshield, turned my car on, and I moved out of my driveway. And I continued on the road along the path. I didn't know exactly where I was driving to, but the GPS helped me. If I continued to look in the rearview mirror, didn't listen to the GPS, I probably would have gotten here. I don't know what time. I would have been wasting time. So we have to continue to look forward and envision the future, know what's ahead, whether you see it or not, whether you know the actual spot that you're going to, envision it, know that that's where you're headed, and look forward. Don't look back. It's, it's, it's Self, it's self-defeating to look back, to look in your rearview mirror. Um, now, visualize your future life. Excuse me. Feel the moment. Um, many of you have probably seen The Secret, and they discuss not just saying what you want, not just writing down what you want, but visualizing the future life that you want. You know, that's where vision boards come in. Some people think it's hocus pocus, it's fluff, 
but really seeing that vision, whether it be on a board, whether it be on your computer screen, seeing that every day gives you an image in your mind, and that's a very strong image. You're embedding something into your mindset that you're, you, you're eventually, as Vanessa Conway spoke about, you will start attracting those things to you. So envision what you want for your future life and feel, have the feelings as if you were already there. There's this saying, as if. That's how you move forward. That's part of the whole mindset mastery. Taking those things that you want in life, even if you don't see them, you don't look in the rearview mirror, you look ahead. The future may not be here yet, but you have the power and you have the right to visualize a specific future for yourself, whatever that may be. Some people want the huge house, the, the big car. Some people just want a marriage. You know, some people want children. Whatever your dream is for your future, visualize that. Feel the feelings. If it's a new car that you need or even want, you know, go to the dealership, drive the car, see, if, see how it feels to drive it, because then you get the feeling of the car. Now, if you are, are longing for a baby, you can't necessarily feel the feeling of a baby, but there are some things. You can watch shows. You can surround yourself around other mothers. Maybe, you know, go to a group. I'm sure that they have some groups available for uh, mothers who want to become mothers, where they can interact with the moms and interact with the children. I know adoptive parents tend to do that. So if you are capable of giving birth yourself, whether it's you giving birth or even adopting, put yourself in a situation where you, f you have the feeling of what it is you want for the, excuse me, for the future. And uh, this is a big one. Surround yourself with successful people. Allow them to leave an impression on you that sticks and as well, be prepared and be willing to leave an impression on them because they're watching. You don't know, you may not see yourself in the space that they're in yet, but know that if you stick with them, if you stand by the people who you want to be like, I heard Lisa Nichols say it on a transformational offer call uh, about a year and a half ago. She said, hook yourself to the caboose of the people with whom you want to associate with the people who you want to quote unquote be like, who you want to, um, who you want to emulate. You don't have to be those people exactly, but watch them, read their books, come to the events like these, and, and stay amongst the folks who will keep you uplifted, the ones who will believe in you because they had the same dreams. Being around folks that don't think like you think or who don't believe how you believe, Life can sometimes get difficult, and sometimes that does cause stress, and sometimes that does kick the fear in, kick fear kicks you in the face, as opposed to you kicking fear in the face, as Cheryl Wood would say. Fear starts kicking you, because you're surrounding yourself around people who don't see life the way you see it, who don't see the same future you see for yourself or for themselves, excuse me, for themselves. So stick with successful people and allow them to pour into you. You see this waffle iron here? I found this picture, and, and I, as I thought about sticking with successful people and allowing them to impress me and, impress, and, and me impressing them and vice versa, and, and just as I'm explaining to you, stick around successful people. Be like the waffle iron. Allow yourself to be poured into. Allow that thing to come down and make an impression. And if you see these, these impressions that you see on the waffle iron, they aren't going anywhere. The only place they're going is in somebody's belly, right? And that's the only way those impressions are going to be gone. It's really the same with us. If we are, if we allow ourselves to be poured into, like I make waffles. As a matter of fact, I just bought a new waffle iron. I make very healthy, healthy waffles. I use chia seeds and felt flour and almond milk. So my waffles tend to be pretty hearty and pretty healthy. I try to put as much nutrients into the waffle as possible. So that when I, I know that when, once I make that, once I pour that batter and that impression is made and that steam is going and that waffle is cooked, there's something healthy for me to put in my system, in my children's system. It's really the same with the people you surround yourself with. Surround yourself with the right people so that when that impression is made, it's a good impression. And whatever you're ingesting from them, whatever they're pouring into you, it's healthy, it's good for you, and it uplifts you. It doesn't bring you down. You know, the white flour brings you down. The sugar, it brings you down. If you put the healthier ingredients into whatever it is that you're doing, 
it's going to lift you up. It's going to make you stronger. And like I said, it's the same with the group of people that you're around. Make sure that they're pouring good things into you and they're leaving an impression that sticks, like the waffle. Now, um, this is a picture I found online as well. And I can't see all the words, but basically it's Suc successful people don't allow problems to bowl them over. They continue to get back up and they continue to move forward in life. And so, again, that is who you want to be surrounded by. That is the mindset that you want to have. I am a successful person. Whether you, quote unquote, see that right now in this present space or not financially or physically, it could be a physical fitness uh, goal that you have. Whatever your goal is, the people that you want to be around are the ones that keep getting back up. They might sprain their ankle, the athlete, but they're going to get back up. They're going to get the athlete, they're going to get the ankle fixed, and they're going to get back up and keep going and stay in the game. That's what you want to be surrounded by. This is a big one. And again, I said, I'm, I'm bringing you very simple things that you need in your life so that you can have that mindset. And this, these simple items are what help you to master that. It's really not that difficult. Live more, laugh more, love more. It's that simple. That is one of the keys and the foundations really to me for a mindset of a master, for the mindset of a person that enjoys life, that has success in life. We have fun, you live more, you get out, you, you're surrounded by successful people. Love more, give hugs. I mean, a hug can heal. It's that simple. And again, it's a mindset. Some people don't believe in, oh, I might get sick. I'm not going to touch, you know, her. Doctors don't get sick, and they, heal, they treat a lot of sick people. So why don't they get sick? I believe it's a mindset. They know that they're here to do a job, and they do that job. They heal the people they're here to, here to heal, and it's as simple as that. Um, you know, I'm sure they eat healthy. Not all doctors eat healthy, but again, it's, it all boils down to mindset. Whatever you think, however you feel, it attaches to your heart, it's, it, it, mind and heart, it's, it's kind of an alignment thing. When they're in alignment, everything just kind of flows and, and things get better. It's mastering your life. You master their mindset. You master how things play out in your life and you have control of that. And again, three simple steps outside of everything else I just said. Live more, laugh more, love more. Those three things alone can take you very far. Listen to good music. I love good music. I spoke about that a little bit earlier. The music that you put in your head, that, that you allow your children to listen to, makes an impression, like the waffle. The books that you read, read more. Even if they aren't, even if the books aren't self-development books, which I read a lot of, read good books, read good literature, good poetry, those things, they, they lift your spirits. They make you feel good about yourself. And again, you might have a bad day, but you can think back on a poem that you read. And that poem can lift your spirits. That poem can make you say, you know what? She's been through this, but she got through it. And I had a poem that I had written in high school that I wanted to bring today. And I honestly do not remember the lyrics. I was 17 years old. The next time I do this presentation, I will have that poem. We had packed up some boxes, and I believe that my yearbook was sitting at the bottom of the box. I could not find it anywhere. So the next time I do this presentation, maybe on the call that I'm going to announce to you guys later, I'll read that poem. But it goes back to the mindset of a person. And I realized I had a, a certain mindset even at 17. I had a difficult time through high school. Not not with my academics, but just in general. And it, it was, you know, but I, I reached, I, I got to the end. I didn't allow anything to deter me, I just kept moving. And the poem speaks to that. So again, reading poetry, reading good books will not only lift you up, but it may bring something out of you that you can bring forth to the world. You may not know you're a poet. Maybe you have something in you that you can bring out. That will help you to master your mind and keep yourself going along the right track. Um, dare to dream. We talked about this a little bit earlier. See yourself, see your dreams, see your future, and don't be afraid. You don't have to tell everyone your dreams. Some people are going to be naysayers. But dream, even if it's just for you, if it's you and your spouse, you and your children, or if you're single, dream. Dr write it out, draw it out, dare to dream. 
we dreamt as kids. We believed things as children. And as life goes on, we just, we kind of forget that we had dreams, you know? And that's what kept us going as kids. Even mud pies, I mean, that's a, it's not real, but it's, you, it's pretend, but it's something that you're envisioning. It might not be the real deal, but it's, the kids are having fun with the mud pies. Let's do more of that. Let's make more mud pies. Let's dream, let's enjoy life a little bit more. Listen to good music, read good books, foster good relationships so that we are strengthening our minds, strengthening our communities, and strengthening our own spirits. And enjoy life. Live life because that's what it's meant to be. Uh, this woman, when I saw the picture, I just thought, okay, I'm going to add this to the presentation because her smile is infectious. Her arms are in the air. It's like she's not, you know, braced and, and, and holding back. She has her arms up. It's, she's just like soaking in the love. I don't know what's around her, but she just exudes beauty and happiness and fun and love. And I thought that this was a great way to end the presentation because this is how we should live life. This is really truly what a mastered mind is like. It, it, it creates this field of love around you. It creates this field of beauty around you. That's my opinion. Some people think I'm a lot of fluff. That's just who I am. But this, to me, is a, a mindset master. This woman looks like she enjoys life and loves life the way it's supposed to be loved. I want to invite you all to um, text Mindset Call to 240-284-5147. I'm going to be conducting, since I, like I said, I just did a few things here. This is not the, this is the tip of the iceberg for the whole mindset piece. And I'm going to start conducting phone calls because we need the daily calls. Well, I'm not going to do daily, so let me backtrack. The weekly calls. Um, and if you're interested in connecting with me on those calls, please text Mindset Call to 240-284-5147. You'll get a text that gives you information. I'll be sending out emails. As a matter of fact, text your name and email. Don't just text Mindset Call, but, but enter your name and email as well so that I have that and I can um, follow up with you after that. And let's connect on social media at ayanamcclellan.com. And if there's anything within this presentation today that resonated with you. I'm going to go a little step further than just asking you to tweet it out or hashtag it. Do a video, maybe do a testimonial, step out of your comfort zone and send that to me in my inbox on Facebook. If you friend me on Facebook, go to my inbox. If you decide, it's, you don't have to, but if you feel so inclined to do excuse me, to do a video, do a video for me just to say, hey, I was inspired, I like the mindset piece, whatever a takeaway. Uh, an inspiration, whatever you found or felt, do that for me. A few seconds video would be, would be helpful, and I'll send you a free gift with that, okay? Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate you all, and get your minds together by some of the simple steps that I just shared with you today.